Let's turn the word of God to the gospel of Mark chapter 4. We're reading line 35 till 41 while we stand. The gospel of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 till 41 from the word of God. And I've been given one theme for the Thanksgiving entitled, Steal the Storm. Come on, can, can we say it together? Steal the Storm. Say it again. And after reading the word, we will get into some serious work. Let's get to work shortly. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Come on, can you say that word with me? Let us cross over to the other side. Can I hear you? Now I am able to preach on those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words probably the rest of my life. Let us cross over to the other side. Our God is a God of progress. He does not want to stand still. He wants to be a God in motion and movement forward, spinning here and there. So he says, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But it was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Any philosopher and theologians would want to stop there and ask, does God lie? And the answer would be no. But doesn't he say in Psalms 121 that he does not sleep, he does not slumber? But here he is asleep. Is he still God? We are about to get to work. Let's go on to the word of God. Because if I have a God that I'm perishing and he's asleep, and he says he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. It's okay for me to slumber. But, but, but I want to be concerned if my God is sleeping. And, and let me read the next word to hear how people behave in the presence of a sleeping God. And they awoke him and said to the sleeping him, Teacher! Do you not care that we are perishing? I thought you're God. The water is feeling, the storm is hot. You don't feel the cold, you don't feel the breeze and the storm. We, we, we need to get a way of waking up our sleeping God if he ever sleeps. And he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Sit down, let's get to work. The storm is a combination of two things. The boy's tedious winds and the staggering water. There can never be a storm without the two things. The wind and the water. The wind stands for the breath of God. The water stands for nations and peoples and groups. The wind stands for the originality, the source of divinity. 
The water stands for creation, for creature. The one that can be tossed to and fro. The other one is a known source because he said unto Nicodemus, the wind comes from the east and goes to the north and to the west and we do not know where it comes from and where it's going and you don't ask. But the water, we know where it comes from. We don't know where the wind comes from. Because it is not written anywhere in scripture in the time of creation. The day which God created the wind. The only thing that I understand from the word of God. Is that when we now see man being formed in the image of God. In the likeness of God. That's the first time we hear the word and he breathes into man and he became a living thing. He breathed into Adam. And Adam is called Adam because he is created from the soil, the earth, which is called Adama. So Adama, when you remove the last A, it remains with Adam. Adam comes from Adama, but you need to understand before Adam was created, there was Eden. And now we will talk about the little girl later called Eve. So in this day, we see the breath of God, the originality of God, the being of God, the, the simplicity of God. He's the one that is causing the problem on the created water. And when the water comes up and the wind from God is staggering the water, there is a problem. But there is a second problem that the source, oh yeah, I love this one. The source of the wind is asleep. I hear somebody saying, I just married and God and say that our children are going to serve the Lord. And after having the first child, and then this first child went to the streets. But God, where is your promise? God Almighty is, is, is asleep. I want you to understand that it is important when God is not speaking, you need to interpret the silence of God because the silence of God is as important as the word of God. You haven't got it. You haven't got it. When God is silent, it is as important as if God is speaking. Because every time we pray, there are three ways we react, God reacts to our prayer. Are you ready for this? When we pray, there are three ways God responds to our prayer. Number one, when you pray and God answers your prayer, he is increasing your faith. Number two, when you pray and God delays answering your prayer, he is, he is teaching you patience. But number three, if you pray and God does not answer your prayer, he has something better for you. I don't think you got that yet. Each time we pray, God responds to our prayer in three ways. When we pray and he answers our prayer, he is increasing our faith. Number two, when we pray and he delays answering our prayer, he is teaching us patience. But number three, when we pray and he does not answer our prayer at all, he has something better than what we have prayed for. So he is in silence and we got to wait. I want someone in this building to understand Understand, you are prayed and God has not answered because He has something better. I say something better when that time comes. You are able to say, Hey, don't you forget this? Don't you forget this? The same people who are complaining, don't you care? We are perishing when their answer came the other way around. They turn around and say, Who could this be? That the wind, the breath, and the water both obey him. I 
want you to understand something here. That we have come to 2021 and by his grace we will enter into 2022. We did not, even when God showed to us, some of us in the prophetic, that something was coming like Corona. We didn't know how deep it was. But I want you to understand you are prayed for God to remove Corona. He hasn't removed it yet because he has something better than the death of Corona. He has something more than the devastations of Corona. He has more than something. And I wanted to correct my son Moses before he goes into the Middle East that that, that disease, that virus is not called Macron because Macron is the Prime Minister of France but he's called Omicron because I don't want him to be arrested in the airport. But whether you call him Macron or Omicron it doesn't matter whether it's called Delta or not it doesn't matter God is quiet about removing this beast God is quiet about removing this storm because when he speaks his voice will change everything so when he's quiet learn your lesson because what matters is that he will speak and when he speaks everything changes and I also want you to learn another lesson there what the lesson which is most important and I came to drop this message to your spirit is that what matters is not what Jesus is doing whether he's asleep or he's awake whether he speaks or not doesn't matter but what is important is that Jesus is in the boat I feel like my marriage is not working, but because he is in the boat. I feel like the business is not getting the right direction, but he is in the boat. This profession where I get my money from is full of corruption. I feel like quitting, but he is in the boat. I feel like this degree is not paying me enough. He is in the boat. I feel like what I thought I am is falling aside, but he is in the boat. I feel like I am not going to other side but because he said let's go the other side and he's in the boat I know we are going to cross as long as I look around and the storm is there and the wind is there I don't care whether it's alive or dead as long as I see him in the boat I know we will cross the other side However evil comes, however great wave comes, however little things and resources you have, a widow with the might, the cruise of oil, what matters is Elijah is in my house. I will live as long as he is in the boat. The Lord is my shepherd. As long as the shepherd is alive, I will face my tomorrow. If I look around, I will face the borrow. My shepherd is in the boat, is alive. And child of God, you need to understand your greatest promise of tomorrow is not how sick you are. Your greatest promise is not how much money you have in the account, but that the order of silver and gold is still holding the orbit of the earth in his life. It's my greatest promise. I want you to understand when people pray put a, a full stop on you and God has not put a comma on you. He is alive. You will still be well. I might be in a life support machine. I might be in this oxygen thing. I feel like my son, the only one I have is hook up on drug. But as long as the one who gave to me this son is still alive, he is going to be the evangelist. He is going to be the church. He is going to be I talk to you.